Hello and welcome to Die Rolling. I'm the ever excitable Adam, and today I'm playing Final Girl. So, uh, Final Girl is a game where you are playing the final girl in a horror movie, and you're essentially trying to defeat the villain. Now, there's several different packs for this game. So, there's a Friday the 13th style one, there's a uh, Poltergeist style one, and then there's like a Cursed Circus and a Jungle one, uh, as well as a uh, Nightmare on Elm Street style one, which I don't own. So I picked up these um, in a trade, and I thought I'd give these a go on camera and see how Final Girl plays. It's something that when it came out, I was really excited to have a look at because the artwork and the kind of quality of the components stuff looked really fun. Uh, and anything which is like horror themed is definitely into my wheelhouse. Uh, so I thought, yeah, let's take a look. So I'm gonna play Final Girl, and we're gonna have a go at Camp Happy Trails. So here we are at Camp Happy Trails, and we are playing as Laurie. We're attempting to defeat Hans the Butcher. Um, now, if you've not played this game before, then I'll explain how you play this as we go along. Uh, but essentially, I'll just do this as we go. They say he wears a worn butcher's smock, stained dark with blood. His sledgehammer, which he drags behind him, supposedly weighs over 50 pounds and could crush an elephant's skull. He's over seven feet tall and his eyes glow a bright scarlet. But the worst part is the iron mask he wears, fashioned to look like a pig, and the wet crunching sound that could be heard beneath it. Ugh. So we are here playing Final Girl, we are Laurie, and we're up against Hans the Butcher. At the moment at Campy Happy Trails, there's a treasure hunt going on. So all the hapless counsellors are just going around, enjoying themselves, not really aware that there is a bloodthirsty killer on the loose. Apart from us, we're, we're very aware. Uh, so we're going to have to try to defeat him. Easier said than done. But um, hopefully this will go okay. And uh, you can take a look at how you play a game of Final Girl and just decide if this is something you'd like to play yourself. So we've got our killer Hans the Butcher over here. He's got two cards on here, which essentially will uh, come into play later. Um, and these are selected from a bunch of different cards. So essentially every time he plays it is gonna be slightly different because you have a variation there. We've got his health on the left-hand side and his last health there. And underneath that could be like one last final health point for him to come back and just when you think he's dead. We've got his killer track over here and as he kills more people, as his uh, bloodthirst goes up, then his speed will increase and so will the damage that he puts out and the terror level. We've chosen hands because, uh, well, we're at a essentially Friday the 13th, and he's essentially Jason in this. Um, but we've chosen this first one because this is the easiest game in the sense of there's no additional rules being chucked at you. It's This is the base game as it is. And then uh, if you guys enjoy this, we'll go on to cover three more of these games. And it's worth noting as well, there is a second final girl that you can play with us uh, in this as well, which is Rico. And uh, we might come back to Camp Happy Trails with Rico. And here's the dice. Uh, so the dice are custom dice. If you get a one or a two, you're in for a bad time. If you get a three or a four, however, you're able to discard two of the cards in your hand to make that a success. And a five and a six is a success. So we've got six of these dice to use. And you'll be rolling uh, dice depending on which level of terror you're at. If uh, terror is pretty low, then of course, you'll be rolling three. You're a lot more confident. At the moment, we're currently on a terror level four. So We've got two dice to roll, and if things increase in terror, we'll only be rolling the one dice. Also, let's take a look at the items before we begin this, and the board as well. So let's talk about the board first. So we've got our, uh, our counsellors here, we've got our killer there, and we've got ourselves there. Uh, the board has got various different uh, numbers on them. We're going to be using these when we're rolling to see if these guys panic. There are two, well, three exits on this one. Uh, if we can manage to get some of our uh, kind of meeples onto there, then we can escape. Uh, and every time we get rid of one of these guys, we're going to be placing it onto one of the spaces on our uh, character here. And once we've got all of those spaces full up, we flip over for her final power, which is whenever you're in the same space as an enemy and inflict damage, do an additional damage. For each additional victim save, you receive plus one time. Now, time is this track uh, just around the outside here. And we start with six time. Um, we're going to be uh, decreasing time as the game goes on. And when we're out of time, well, 
that's it. Basically, we can't do any more actions. We can also use time to buy new cards for our deck. We start our deck with these zero cost time cards. Zero time cost even. So uh, we've got the ability to do a short rest where if we get two successes, we get two hit points. One success, we get a hit point and our time goes down by one. No successes, we get uh, health. The terror goes up, time goes down at the end of our turn. We have two walk cards. So uh, essentially, if you get two successes, you move it to two spaces, time goes down. Move it to one space, time goes down. No successes, move up to one space. Take damage or time goes down by two. Or you can just move time down by two. And if you have a look, we only have five hit points. So we don't have a specially great, um, yeah, great start there. You know, two focus cards. Uh, two successes increases the time by two. One, um, sorry, decreases the terror and then increases the uh, time by two. One success, decrease the terror, time goes down by one. Failure, minus two time. And the last one we have is a weak attack. Two successes, we do a damage. One success, a damage, but we also take a damage. And then no successes, we take a damage at the end of our turn. So there are our action cards we've got. The board as well, we have these orange areas here. We've got the cabins, the dock, and the utility shed. And we're going to be able to go to these different locations to pick up these items. Uh, so there's a lucky rabbit's foot in the cabins, for instance. Laurie's bow is on the dock, and the pepper spray is in the utility shed. Uh, now at the moment, we can't actually search those locations because the search cards are over here. So we're gonna have to buy those at a later date. So the first phase is the action phase. During this phase, you're gonna be playing action cards to move, attack, rest, search, and all take various other actions. As a reminder, you start the game with the six zero cost action cards. So uh, we need to draw an event to begin with. And we found a secret tunnel. The tunnel was the best kept secret of randy teenagers, but now it might save my life. Choose two of the following spaces, utility shed, cabins, or docks, and place a secret tunnel token at each. You may move between these spaces as if they were adjacent. Enemies cannot use a secret tunnel. That's pretty cool. So we're going to do the utility shed and the cabins. Because they are quite far away from each other. Okay, so now we'll begin our turn. And we're going to try to walk up to the cabins. So uh, we've, we're going to be rolling two dice. One foot in front of the other, nice and slow. There is a bloodthirsty killer after me, but that's no reason to panic, right? So I'm going to make a little discard pile over here. So I'm rolling two dice because that's what we're currently looking at there. And at the moment, I've got no successes, which means my time's going to go down by two or uh, I'll take move up to one space, take a damage, and my time goes down by two. Now my three here means I could discard two cards to actually make this successful. And I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna get rid of one of my, um, my short rest and my weak attack to get me one success. So I can move up to one space. That kind of changes what I'm gonna, does it change? No, I'm still gonna head towards the cabin. So I got one success for that, which means I move it to one space, and this goes down by one. I'm going to try and walk again because it worked so well last time. And um, essentially that's going to be a fail unless I spend two cards. And I'm going to do it. I, I really want to walk. So I'm going to spend two cards to get one success, which means we get to move one space. Time goes down by one, and we're in the same space as these two campers here. And that's the end of our action turn. Unfortunately, I don't have any cards in my hand, which um, isn't great. At this point, I can now spend time to purchase action cards from the action tableau over here. If the cost of a card is greater than zero, I move the time marker down one space on the track for each time spent. The cost for each action card is shown in the bottom right corner of the card. So I've got four to spend. And I have no cards in my hand at the moment. So I'm going to grab a search. And a sprint. So I've got a movement and a search card. 
Hopefully the cover's not going to surprise me now, but we shall see. I've finished my posting now, so I move this back up to six. And now all the cards I used last time go into the action tableau, and I can get them up next turn. Now we're on to the killer phase. So Hans is now on the hunt for some juicy counsellors to eat. Uh, so we've got to resolve the killer action as indicated on the finale card, uh, which is over here. So he's going to target um, either ourselves or a the closest character that's to him, and then he's going to attack. Now, there's no one on his space, so he can't actually attack, so that's the end of his go. If there's a boot there, that would mean he'd move, but there's no movement, so essentially, he's done. Our first tarot card comes out now, though. Let's go see if the rumours are true. Place two new victims in the space where the killer started the game, which is where he is right now, and then we get a new event comes out. So maybe he wasn't quite uh, quite awake yet, and these guys have come along and actually disturbed him. Death Wish. I've got to get a better look, even if it kills me. During the upkeep phase, move the victim closest to the killer, one space towards it. Do not count victims currently in the same space as the killer. So essentially, we have there's been a rumour going around Camp Happy Trails that Hans is back, and we want to find out if it's true or not. We now go to the panic phase, but as no one's been killed, they don't panic. They're not aware of the danger they're currently in. Only I am. We now go to the upkeep phase. So um, during the upkeep phase, move the victim closest to the killer, one space towards it. And it's either going to be these guys or these guys or this guy. Uh, I'm going to move one of these guys down here. Okay, so we're on to the next round. Okay, we're going to try and search whilst we're here. So, we're spending our search card. And we've got one success, where we can take the top item from the cabins. Uh, and we don't have enough cards to actually do this, so we're just going to take the top card from the cabins. So we found the Lucky Rabbit's Foot. I'm not the superstitious sort, but I'll take all the help I can get. Discard during the action phase to make a horror roll for each... Uh, success, choose one of the following. So you can increase time by two, you can heal, uh, you can move down the uh, terror track, and you can also move on space. That's pretty handy. And now time goes down by one. I'm now going to sprint and I'm going to try and take these guys with me. Let's see if I falter. Oh, great success! So I can move three spaces with. Um, the guys who are on the same space as me. So I'm going to go one, two, and I'm I'm going to actually pass through into here, but whilst I'm moving this way, um, I get to actually drop these guys off. So I'm going to drop them off. I'm going to, uh, oof, I'm going to put the horror level down one, and I'm going to give myself two more time, and then, um, I move an additional space and then move this down by one. So I'm actually back to the start here uh, for time. I've got no more cards left, so we now go to the purchasing phase, the planning phase. So I've got six to spend and I get all of my cards back from last time as well. So this is a good point to get one of the really good cards whilst I've got the, um, whilst I'm able to. I've just realized I've got a hidden card down here. Uh, <laughs> I know there's another card. Okay, so let me just move these around a little bit. Okay, I'm going to grab planning. Do I grab? I'm going to grab improvise. I'm going to grab improvise. I'm going to grab a search and a close call. And I get all of my previous cards back. My sprint goes over here. My search goes back there. That's the killer phase. Unfortunately, the killer is in the same space as one of the hapless camp survivors. So somebody's like, what's that in the woods? I go over there and they're dead. You can't save us, no one can. If there are no victims on the board, ignore. All victims in your space must panic twice. Okay, so uh, 
This character over here doesn't believe me when I say we can sort this, this killer out. Uh, so they're going to move down three. So they go in there. They're going to panic again. They go along five. So they've gone off to make out point. Maybe to meet up with a boyfriend or girlfriend. Uh, now the killer attacks. So another dead. Horror goes up one. And then it's going to move towards the nearest meeple, which is on this exit over here. Okay, see so upkeep face. So um, this guy moves from the docks into here. Okay, I'm going to try this improvise. Of course. Um, so I'm going to use my... Oh, actually, I'm going to use close call to re-roll uh, two dice. Oh, Adam, you pillock. So that that just essentially failed, blew up in my face. Uh, I'm going to try to walk. So one second, I got a failure for this. So um, if this moves up one, my time goes down by one. Uh, I'm going to get rid of my two focuses to get one success to move up to one space. Going to walk again, hopefully. And double success so I can move up to two spaces. Um, so I'm going to move it into the utility shed. And then I'm going to go for a search whilst I'm in the utility shed. Like one success, I can take the top item. Um, yeah, I'm just going to grab this pepper spray. So uh, pepper spray, a few squirts in their eyes and they'll think twice about messing with this girl. If the killer is in your space, you may discard this to immediately end the killer phase, ignore the remaining movements, attacks and any other effects. That is very handy. And my time goes down by one. If I didn't already do that. And that's the end of my go. So I've got a weak attack and a short rest left. I'm going to grab that sprint from over here. The end of my purchasing phase, my planning phase. So these all go back. And the killer phase. So killer stabs one of these guys. Dark feast. For every victim that is dead, hands are recovered as health. But he hasn't lost any, so... He's all good. He's chewing on the remains, I imagine. Uh, we have a panic happening down here because they're on the same space as the killer. And they're going to go two, which is towards the docks, hoping to escape. But upkeep phase brings them straight back. Okay, I'm going to try for a sprint. One success, so I can move it to two spaces. So we're going to go one, two. Time goes down by one. And that's going to be the end of my turn. So I can buy, I get all of my, uh, my zero cards back. Got five left. I'm going to grab an improvise and a search. Killer's turn. Stabby, stabby. Only rolling one dice now. And he's doing three damage every time he attacks. I fell asleep. What did I miss? Place one new victim at the cabins. And horror goes up by two. So we're going to increase his bloodlust by two. And unfortunately, we now reveal Hans' dark ability. For every victim that Hans kills, he recovers health. 
Okay, upkeep phase. So uh, we're going to move this guy out from the fire pit. He's going to find out what's going on. And uh, yeah, we're back onto our turn. Sprint goes back over there. So we're going to try to do a walk. We can get rid of two cards to make that su one success. We'll get rid of the short rest and the weak attack. So we get one success. We can move up to uh, one space. So we're going to move into here. And we're going to increase our time by two. We're then going to move an additional space. I kind of feel like maybe we should get these guys out of there, but Hans is quite far away from them. So we're going to go back on ourselves, go for that cabin guy. Okay, we've got to do this focus next. Oof. Failed, so time goes down by two. I'm going to try another focus. Failed again. So we'll just end up with a walk. And we're just going to move it down by two rather than anything else. So that's the end of our go. We're going to get be able to buy one card of value one. So we're going to grab this close call. Unfortunately, all our other cards go back in there. We don't actually have a way to move next round, which is a real shame. Uh, hands attacks, but there's no one there. So he goes to the terror. He's just standing there. Horror up by two. He moves two spaces towards the closest victim. So he only needs to move one. Okay, this round, I'm not going to do anything. So I'm just going to pick up all my cards from last time. And I'm going to grab a critical blow. So Hans kills. And he has unholy range. Hans has an additional damage for each knife. That's one of his minor dark powers. I was hoping we wouldn't have any of those come out, but there we go. Okay, phase. Okay, we're going to uh, walk. We've got a success, so we get to move up to one space. We're going to move into there. We're then going to try to do a focus. Oh, and time should have gone down by one. We get rid of two cards to um, help us here. So I'm going to get rid of short rest and weak attack. So Terra goes down by one, as does our time. And then I'm going to use this improvised card. Two dice this time. Oh no, that's a real shame. I was really hoping to use his lucky rabbit's foot. So I'm going to use my close call. I'm going to move these down by two. get one success so I'll get rid of my focus and search so this means for the next horror roll only all threes and fours are successful and then we're going to do use this lucky rabbit's foot oh so that's a success we can um, increase our time by two do one damage to hands Sorry, heal, uh, reduce this by one, or move one space. Um, I think we're gonna get ourselves some time. Okay, so we've got four points to spend. We're gonna grab a search because we're at the cabins. I'm gonna grab a sprint. So we currently have a walk, a critical blow, a search, and a sprint. Okay, hands is over here, stabby, stabby. And our terror card coming out is he kept swinging his hammer and killing and killing. If there are no victims on the board, nope. So um, he's going to target a victim and move one space towards. Uh, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. He's going to move that way. Uh, he does it again. So he's in the lake now. Upkeep phase. Someone heard something. They're going to go check on everyone. It's probably safe now, right? Okay, we're going to do a sprint. Two 
two successes, so we can move up to three spaces. So we're going to go one, two. Uh, three over there. Time goes down. Sorry, time goes down by one. Um, and we get to take an action card a maximum of two time. So we're going to grab another sprint there. We're going to try and do another sprint. Got one success, we can move up to two spaces. So we're going to go one, two. And then we're going to try and walk out of here. Wish me luck, guys. Yes, I'm going to go for the one success so I can move up to one space. Move into here. I've got six people safe. We flip over. Laurie is now able to do an additional damage every time she inflicts damage. She saved six people. So uh, I'm pretty happy with that. And that's going to be the end of my go. So I've got uh, three points left to buy things. Get all of my previous cards back. I'm going to try and go for, for a distraction. We're going to try and get this track back that way. Hans moves. Run for your life if there are no victims on the board. Discard. All victims that are not in your space must panic. So, victim runs out into there. And of course, Hans murders it mercilessly. Upkeep face, there's no one left. It's just us and Hans now. We don't really have any weapons. We should try and get this weapon from the docks. Um, so let's try. We're going to try for a distraction to begin with. Of course, that's a fail. So we're going to decrease this and decrease this by four. I'm going to try and do a focus. Um, so we'll get rid of our short rest and our walk. So we got one success, so that goes down by one, the time goes down by one also. And we're going to do a focus again. And I'm not going to spend any more cards, so that goes down by two, that's the end of our go. We can't buy anything, we get a walk back, but everything else just goes back into there. So Hans, he can't murder anybody where he is, so we draw a terror card out. Unholy speed, Hans moves one additional space for each boot. So he is souped up and ready to kill me. Uh, it won't take long for him to actually finish me off. I really need to go and find... Um, yeah, I was hoping to get to his space and do some damage, but I don't really want to get to his space now. Um, or maybe we go in for it and let's just try, try to get him. So I'm going to walk there. Let's see what this gets us. So one success to move up to one space. I could get rid of two cards to assist me to move up to two spaces, which, yeah, we're going to do. We're going to move up to two spaces. Time goes down by one. And then we're going to use our critical blow and hopefully do some damage here. Nothing. A waste. So uh, we do two damage, we do three because of this, so uh, that's three damage gone. And I'm just going to put some on here as well because he's got some hit points up there. So I won't put those on, essentially he has done damage there. That's the damage we've done, so we've done three damage. We take two damage ourselves, horror goes up by one as the end of our go. Now we've got five time to buy stuff. So I think at this point we should probably be getting stuff like Retaliate. So we're going to Retaliate, we're going to get Close Call. We get these cards back. Walk, a Focus, a Short Rest and a Focus. These all go back onto here. And it's Hands' Go. Hands goes to attack us, but we're going to use our Pepper Spray and we end the phase. We don't have any, um, any attack cards we can really use on him. So we're going to try and walk. We'll get rid of our, well, we're going to use our close call to try to reroll one of those dice. I did nothing. We'll get rid of our, our short rest and, no, we'll get rid of our two focuses, make that a success. So we can move up to one space. 
time goes down by one. Then I'm going to do a short rest. And uh, yeah, we'll leave it at that. Okay, so um, we fail, we get one hit point back. Terra goes up one, time goes down by one, that's the end of our go. So I've got four to spend. Do I go for a furious strike or a couple of sprints? I need a search. And we'll get a sprint. Okay, so the killer attacks, there's nobody there. He wants fresh blood. If there are no victims on the board, discard and draw the next terror card. There are no terror cards. So we are now in the finale. Butcher, Bloodlust. So his Bloodlust increases by one during the killer phase. He then moves three spaces and does um, five damage at the moment. It'll be six damage when he's at the very top. So he can kill us with one, one strike here at the moment. Oof. Okay, so we're going to sprint and hopefully get... Sprint and get to the dock. So we're going to do this one. We're going to move up to one space, take a damage. Two times gone, so it's there. And that's the end of our go. We've got four to spend. We get all of our bits back. We're going to take a furious strike. Okay, so hands his turn. Bloodlust goes up. Hands moves here, here. Then he's going to do six damage to us, but we're going to use retaliate. And hopefully, this will stop him. And I have nothing to help me. So Hans catches up with Laurie just as she gets to the dock and he kills her. Well, I failed at Camp Happy Trails. I mean, I didn't even touch that killer, really. Um, so Laurie's dead and I'm going to come back and I'm going to play it again with Rico at a later date. Uh, my initial thoughts for this game. Um, yeah, it's enjoyable. It's not as involved as I thought it was going to be. It's fairly light, I'd say. Um, jury's still out. Let's leave it at that. So um, if you enjoyed this video, then please like and subscribe to our various different social medias, Instagram, Facebook, and of course, YouTube. Uh, if I made any mistakes, then please let me know in the comments below and I'll add a mistakes from made section. And until next time, guys, stay safe and keep rolling.